Hi, I'm Melissa Muir. Welcome back for another Tool Time Tuesday and another product review from Potter USA. Today I'm going to talk about his new stamping tool that he has come out with. It's a product that's still a little bit in development, meaning that he has more tools that he is creating for this tool. So it will become very, very versatile rather than just being a stamping machine. So let's take a look at this and see what we have to look forward to. So this is the stamping tool. You can see it's a little bit larger than some of those that are out there on the market. And again, that is because this is going to be something that becomes much more versatile than just something that you use with your metal stamps. So there are a lot of tools and accessories that will be coming out shortly. But for now, let's look and see how it works with just the stamping. So you'll see here we've got this large ram or this bar here. And you'll notice that it also has the springs on it and it has also a retaining ring. This makes it so that you can adjust your stamping to make it a little harder, a little lighter, and I'm also going to show you how to use it as a drop hammer. Now I'm aware that there is at least a one other system that's out there that is a stamping tool. And one of the things that I noticed when I was reviewing that tool was that it had a quarter inch quick chain shank. Well, not all of my stamps are a quarter of an inch wide. Some are much larger, some are much smaller, thinner, some are round, some are, are square. So that to me was kind of a drawback and I know that there are other types of heads that you can get for that but that also became very cumbersome by the time you had to switch those out. So one of the things that I like to do here I just have a piece of scrap metal that I'm going to uh, stamp on. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to use this little bar here and this helps me align all of my stamps. You'll see also that we have a nice table here. Nice and big which I really like if I'm doing cuffs or something like that. And so all I need to do is just adjust this measuring bar or this stabilizing bar here in the back. And then I can line up my tool. I'm going to bring my stamp in. I'm going to just let it rest right on top of my piece that I'm going to be stamping. Now I can hold this with my hand and my hand is still clear. So I'm not at all worried about hitting my hand with something that becomes a large hammer. However, if you are still worried about that, I just picked up one of these clamps, probably from Home Depot, Harbor Freight, something like that. And I can just open this up, bring it in, and I can clamp it into place. And that will help me so that I can keep my hands completely free. Now to operate this, and I'll just back you up here a little bit. To operate this, I'm going to just lift up on this ram here and I'm just going to bring it down. One nice hard whack. Now one of the things I really like about this spring is that it bounces back up so I don't get a double tap on here. And here you can see I have a beautifully stamped D. I mean it's perfect, it's not too light in some areas, it's not too dark in some areas. It has a great stamp to that. Now you can see I have everything lined up, ready to go. And you'll also see that I have a line here down the middle of my piece, as well as two holes marked. And that's because this will basically become kind of a bracelet link, and I wanted to mark where I'm going to drill holes or whatever else, just to make sure that they're kind of cleared and out of my way. So here I've got this line down the middle, and that is so that I can align my text. So in this case, I'm going to stamp out the word dream big, and I want this to be aligned properly. So I've just centered my stamp right on top of that. I've nestled it kind of here in the corner. I'm going to use my clamp and clamp this into place. So again, I'm going to raise and drop the hammer here. Again, you'll see I've now got a really good impression on my stamp or on my piece. Now I told you you could also use this as a drop hammer and what that means is that I'm just going to lift this up to a certain height every time and make sure that it's the same spot every time. So all I need to do is remove this retaining ring, a little tight at first. And remove the retaining ring and the spring itself. Now right now it's setting down on top of my stamp. Let's see if you can see that here. So right now it's just resting on top of my stamp. 
But let's say that I want to drop this and have it give me the same impression every time. So what I would do is I'm going to lift this to whatever height I'm after and I'm just going to use a Sharpie and mark right here on my bar at the point where I'm going to lift this up and drop it. And again, I have a very nice deep impression. Now I would suggest that if you're going to be stamping that you do annealed metal. Doesn't always have to be, but you will get better impressions. Also notice back here, because of this, I'm not getting a lot of indentation on the back side of my piece, which is kind of nice because I know that there are times where I might hit it a little bit too hard with a hammer and I start to deform the back part of my piece and then there becomes a lot of cleanup that's involved in this. So what are some other ways that you can use this tool? So I have a number of different tools and punches and things like that that I use. One of the things I like to use even my hydraulic press for is for flaring rivets or knocking divots into things and this will also allow you to do that. So in this case, let's say that I wanted to put a divot where I'm going to drill a hole or something like that. What I can do is just place my tool, my divot, in this case a center punch. I'm just going to knock a little divot. And it makes it kind of nice because I'm able to keep one hand steady and free and then I can just go around and put in my marks. Another thing I would be able to do with this as long as I have kind of a steady hand is be able to start to flare rivets. Now other tools than accessories that are going to be coming out is going to be a piece that's going to allow you to do round or circular pieces and again just rotate your piece so that everything stays nice and even. Other tools that he might come out with as well would be uh, planishing heads or texture heads. So this way you can then begin to use this for a planishing and a texturing tool. So there's a lot of really good possibilities with this. The price is actually quite affordable compared to some of the other systems out there. I believe this runs in like the $325, $350 range. It does have a larger base and platform. There is quite a bit of weight to this, probably about 20 pounds, maybe only 15. It's not too bad. But again, it allows me to have such a nice large working surface. In addition, tools can be removed or their positions can be changed. So this positioning bar here can slide up or down depending on where you may need that. Again, we have our positioning sliding guide here that can go back and forth and help me keep everything aligned. So there's a lot of good features on this and I'm very excited about some of the new tooling that will also be developed for that. So it's definitely a tool to kind of keep your eyes on and watch out for.